uh, if you are a spiritual seeker and you go to lots of different spiritual teachers, it, it can get very confusing. Um, you know, there's questions on self-will, is there a person making choices, you know, what's actually happening. I do really like Hawkins' work, um, even though Hawkins was an enlightened teacher, but he wanted to put a roadmap for people who are in the head that they could understand and comprehend and they could be attracted to spiritual work. And so he described the levels of consciousness, which he did uh, through um, uh, muscle testing and kinesiology. Um, so um, there's levels of consciousness and there's karma, right? And also uh, at each level, so each level of consciousness is dominated by an attractor field. You know, there's like different oceans. There's different oceans of consciousness, shall we say, uh, to make it sound dualistic. So, let's say the we ha let's make an easy one. Like there's the there's a level of consciousness where fear fear do uh, dominates. Yeah, and uh, in there there it's like um, so if you're or no I'll use a no I'll use a, a better one. I was at I was at the uh, the, the level of desire or endless craving, the addiction level, mm -hmm. you know, where, you know, I, wa I wanted one donut and then the next donut and then the next donut. And whatever I went after, it was never enough. So that there is also, f there, so these are different levels of the sea. And at each level of the sea, there is what's called a dominant attractive field. Uh, and each, each is almost like a magnetic field and all the particles in the field of addiction, desire, or in the field of fear, they have like, it's like a radio station and it's a dominant thing. At that level of consciousness, that tends to orchestrate all the particles that are accessing the thoughts, the behaviors of the limited aspects in that magnetic field of fear or in the magnetic field of uh, desire or craving. And so you could, say, you could say also, in a way, that those magnetic fields have a level of grace in them, but less and less levels of grace. Mm -hmm. And as you go down deeper into fear, into shame, it's like the light or the grace, or that thing that... Mm -hmm. It's like, like, you know, if, if you, it's like the sun gets less, or the, the, the capacity for grace, mm -hmm. uh, and the call for those particles to come out into the light is less, less, uh, can happen, but is, is um, less likely to happen, you know, because they're, they're lost in the illusion, they're lost in the fear clouds, so they tend to be dominated by that part, so all addicts, you know, they're going after one glass of alcohol, after the next glass of alcohol, after the next glass of alcohol, uh, and all donut addicts are having one donut after the next donut. The ones dominated by fear are having the next fear of thought. And they're also, it's like that's an attractive field, they're, they're having fear thoughts, they're feeling fear, and even fearful things are materializing for them. You know, they're, uh, they're attracted to fearful places and fearful things happen, and they're holding fearful thoughts in, in mind over and over again, and these fearful things are happening. Now, uh, you could say that karmically, uh, and this is like unseen in their karma, uh, there can be things when in a past lifetime they've done a good deed or whatever. So at a certain point it seems like a light, you know, it seems like a flick of light can come in. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a, spontaneously they can make a different choice or a different thing happens. And now they're attracted up to the next level. You see, and as you go up to the next level, there's even more light or grace on the next level. So if they made, so uh, I know what Hawkins said. It's like uh, if if I, if I, like you know, it's like sometimes the the soul incarnates to face a certain challenge in a certain lifetime. So like you know, for me it would probably be like you know, like I'm, I could get incarnated into war after war after war, and the, the test is like, I'm at say one, I don't know, 150, which is I'm a coward. So it's like every time you have to go over the trenches and into the bullets, it's like, I've got a tummy ache, so I can't, can't do it, you know. So, so or I, 
Or I run as a coward, you know, while they're not looking in the middle of the night. So it's like, you know, but then that's, I'm dominated by that field of fear. And that's my level of consciousness, which I'm dominated by. But then you will get weak, can't you? You know, it's like the universe spits you back out again into another life. And then at a certain point, something happens. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it free will. You could call it free will. And sometimes, you know, like everyone else is going to go over the trenches for their country, for a greater cause, for a higher good, for God, for love, for family, for whatever. And in that moment, you shoot over. You're no longer dominated. You've made, you know, it's like now you're not at the field of a coward. Uh, then you're incarnating. It's like sun, and then you're you're dominated by another attractive field. Let's say you're at the level of integrity, and there's even more grace in the air. So there's even more potentiality. I mean, Hawkins uses the word, not necessarily free choice, but potential in the unseen, because the idea of making choice is a dualistic notion, uh, more like there's influences of spirit and karma. So in the higher fields of light, there's even greater potentiality for the grace to have effect and for them to, and for things seemingly to happen, which move them up to the next level. Obviously, when you're, if you're like, uh, you know, a saint or St. Francis, you're, you're dominated by that field of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Like, all saints are having similar thoughts. You know, enlightened teachers, they're having not, you know, it's the non-dual experience. So when you're dominated by the fields of saints, like, it's, it's when you're on that radio frequency of sainthood, it's unlikely you're going to be getting, I mean, even if a thought came that was negative, it would only flick in the light, it wouldn't even be. But in the lower fields where you're, there's huge fear and huge body, those thoughts, manif you know, they go over and over again and all these, so you, you're dominated. In terms of the idea of a chooser, you know, well, a chooser is more actually a, a thing of, um, See, the chooser makes the idea that the, the world is real. You know, that like A is like what is said affects, affects a me, there's a me and a you. But actually, no, there is, there is consciousness and there's karma behind what is seen in this world. So it's more like a multiple, it's like it's much more complicated than there's just a me. There, there's, you know, there's effects from all the past choices, there's effects from the collective, and what unfolds, you know, may seem like I made a choice, but there's other variables uh, that, you know, when, 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 uh, and also when you're at lower levels of consciousness, it seems like there's a me making individual choices. Like I am, I, I have free will, I can choose to eat a donut now or I cannot. But as you go higher, it, you see that there's, the idea of a separate you choosing starts to dissolve. And you see it's more like an unfolding of a more non-local thing that's coming out of consciousness that, that's unfolding. But I would say, you know, to, in my view on the question is like at the higher fields, um, it's, like, it's like the light is very, very dominant. And so anything that's limited, it has a very, very high effect and you're dominated by the light and your actions are very graceful all the time. Whereas where if you're just very extremely body identified, extremely thinking and having fear-based thoughts, yeah, there's potential for grace, but the potential for grace uh, is less apparent. Mm. I know that sounds very odd, but you know, when I was in when I was in my ego, when I was just eating donuts and working in the stock market, uh, there wasn't much grace going on in my life. I was just like in the, in a pattern of things until I got near death, and there was a confront, which I think was grace. You could say that was the grace. And then that shifted me, catapulted me into the next, you know, the, into the next levels of consciousness, where there was now a total willingness to, to move towards grace. So that's a grace field. So that's how to answer, that's my view 